safety without your help. Protect and govern it always by your goodness. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the lessons. A reading from the second book of Samuel. When the wife of Uriah heard that her husband was dead, she made lamentation for him. When the morning was over, David sent and brought her to his house, and she became his wife and bore him a son. But the thing that David had done displeased the Lord, and the Lord sent Nathan to David. He came to him and said to him, there were two men in a certain city, the one rich and the other poor. The rich man had very many flocks and herds, but the poor man had nothing but one little ewe lamb, which he had bought. He bought it up and it grew up with him and with his children. It used to eat of his meager fare and drink from his cup and lie in his bosom, and it was like a daughter to him. Now there came a traveler to the rich man, and he was loved to take one of his own flock or herd to prepare for the wayfarer who had come to him. But he took the poor man's lamb and prepared that for the guests who had come to him. Then David's anger was greatly kindled against the man, he said to Nathan, as the Lord lives, the man who has done this deserves to die. He shall restore the lamb fourfold, because he did this thing, and because he had no pity. Nathan said to David, you are the man. Thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, I anointed you king over Israel, and I rescued you from the hand of Saul. I gave you your master's house and your master's wives into your bosom and gave you the house of Israel of Judah. And if that had been too little, I would have added as much more. Why have you despised the word of the Lord to do what is evil in his sight? You have struck down Uriah the Hittite with the sword and have taken his wife to be your wife, and have killed him with the sword of the Amorites. Now therefore the sword shall never depart your house, for you have despised me, and have taken the wife of Uriah the Hittite to be your wife. Thus says the Lord, I will raise up trouble against you from within your own house, and I will take your wives before your eyes, and give them to your neighbor. And he shall lie with your wives in the sight of this very son. For he did it secretly. But I will do this thing before all Israel and before the son. David said to Nathan, I have sinned against the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. together Psalm 51 as printed on your bulletin insert. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your loving kindness. In your great compassion, blot out my offenses. Wash me through and through from my wickedness, and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions, and my sin is ever before me. Against you only have I sinned, and done what is evil in your sight. And so you are justified in your speaking, and upright in your judgment. Indeed, I have been wicked from my birth, a sinner from my mother's bosom. But behold, you look for truth to be with me, and will make me understand wisdom. 
my spirit here in me. Cast me not away from your presence, and take not your Holy Spirit away from me. Give me the joy of your sustaining up again, and sustaining me with your God and your spirit. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Ephesians. I, the prisoner in the Lord, beg you to lead a life worthy of the calling to which you have been called, with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in love, making every effort to maintain the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body and one Spirit just as you were called to the one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in all. But each of us was given grace according to the measure of Christ's gift. Therefore it is said, when he ascended on high, he made captivity itself a captive. He gave gifts to his people. When it says he ascended, what does it mean but that he had also descended into the lower parts of the earth? He who descended is the same one who ascended far above all the heavens so that he might fill all things. The gifts he gave were that some would be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers, to equip the saints for the work of ministry, for building up the body of Christ, until all of us come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, to maturity, to the measure of the full stature of Christ. We must no longer be children tossed to and fro and blown about by every wind of doctrine, by people's trickery, by their craftiness and deceitful scheming, but speaking the truth in love, we must grow up in every way into him who is the head, into Christ, from whom the whole body, joined and knit together by every ligament with which it is equipped, as each part is working properly, promotes the body's growth in building itself up in love. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. That was ten to our table and seen film number six ninety nine.
disciples were there. They themselves got into the boats and went to Capernaum looking for Jesus. When they found him on the other side of the sea, they said to him, Rabbi, when did you come here? Jesus answered them, Very truly I tell you, you are looking for me, not because you saw signs, because, but because you ate your fill of the loaves. Do not work for the food that perishes, but for the food that endures for eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. For it is on him that God the Father has set his seal. Then they said to him, What must we do to perform the works of God? Jesus answered them, This is the work of God, that you believe in him whom he has sent. So they said to him, What sign are you going to give us then, so that we may see it and believe you? What work are you performing? Our ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness, as it is written. He gave them bread from heaven to eat. Then Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, it was not Moses who gave you the bread from heaven, but it is my Father who gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is that which comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. They said to him, Sir, give us this bread always. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. The Gospel of the Lord. Friends, let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be always acceptable in your sight. O oh God, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Please be seated. Last Sunday, a few of us sat here in the nave and watched the film The Philadelphia Eleven. It's a documentary that tells the story of the 11 women who were Episcopal deacons that felt called to be priests in the church. But in 1974, the Episcopal Church hadn't come to a consensus on women as priests. Only four years earlier, the first group of women delegates were seated at the General Convention. They made the case for women's ordination and came very close to getting it passed. But when women tried to press the issue again at the 1973 convention, there was tremendous pushback. And so the women deacons met. They developed a strategy. They had support of some male bishops, the vice president of the Episcopal House of Deputies, and the rector of the historically black Church of the Advocate in Philadelphia. And on July 29, 1974, 50 years ago, they defied the rules of the Episcopal Church and were ordained priests. While not exactly speaking truth to power with words, these women did speak truth to power with action. It wasn't easy. They received death threats, hate mail, and harassment. In many cases, they weren't allowed to function as priests. And even though the church came around in 1976 to approving the ordination of women, the Episcopal Church still allowed bishops to deny women a path to the priesthood under what was called the Conscience Clause. As a result, many women would have to relocate to another geographic region just to follow their call and hope to find a bishop who would be favorable to allowing them to be priests. 
An almost identical scenario happened just a few years after that for LGBTQ people. We have come a long way since 1974, both as a church and as a society. But it doesn't happen without those willing to stand up, speak up, shake things up, and call out the sins of those in authority when necessary. It takes being willing to be a Nathan approaching a King David. Nathan didn't have an easy task. We need only look at what happened to John the Baptist when he chastised Herod to know that those who enjoy having power over people will not take kindly to those who challenge their actions. I can only imagine what was going on in Nathan's head. In the same way that an earthly powerful King David sends people off to war and commands the presence of a woman in his court, God, as a source of power, is telling Nathan, go tell King David, you ain't right. Now Nathan has to contrive a way to break this news to David. And he comes up with a plan, a very pastoral plan. Nathan tells the wayward king a parable. Parables are useful tools. Jesus spoke in parables to his followers as a way of helping them understand the presence of God in ways that they could comprehend, allowing them to think for themselves. Because each of us has the ability, with our God-given wisdom, to weigh what is right and what is wrong, what is good versus what is evil. And this parable of the rich man taking the poor man's only and most beloved lamb to slaughter worked. As Walter Bergman notes about this situation, David rightly understood the parable. But he was too blind to understand how it spoke to his own wrongdoing. His guilty conscience is what betrayed him. He so quickly blusters about how this rich man in the story deserves to die. He shall restore the lamb fourfold because he did this thing and because he had no pity. Aha, Nathan says, busted. David will get punished. Nathan's mouth opens and he pours out the words of God laying out for David all that is about to come upon him. The once favored will lose the child Bathsheba is carrying. His house is going to be divided, and his wives will be given to others. I can only imagine what it must have been like for Nathan to stand there and speak those words to the king. I imagine it took quite a bit of courage to stand up to one who so easily could have ordered him struck down right there on the spot. But this is the role of a prophet. They're the ones who listen deeply to the spirit, to the wisdom of God, the Sophia. And even with these knocking, voices trembling, butterflies beating their wings furiously in their stomachs, speak the truth to the powerful. They do so despite the risk to their own lives because the words in their mouths are not theirs but the Spirit of God that is upon them. Now, I find that Episcopalians tend to be shy about thinking that there are still prophets in this world of this kind today. The whole idea of God speaking through people in the way of our biblical ancestors may seem just a little too woo-woo for most Episcopalians. And yet, we can still point to people who have spoken truth to power and who do it from a place grounded in the gospel. The late South African Bishop Desmond Tutu led the fight against apartheid. The late Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. 
whose campaign for black civil rights in this country was not limited just to black people, but the liberation of the working class whites who struggled against the invisible caste system in our own country that keeps millions living in poverty. And today, that mantle of speaking up for justice for those who are living paycheck to paycheck can be seen in the efforts of the Poor People's Campaign led by Bishop William Barber and the Reverend Dr. Liz Theoharis. And then there are those 11 women in Philadelphia in 1974 and four more women in Washington, D.C. in 1975 and their supporters, the Reverends Paul Washington, William Wendt, and Peter Beebe, who stood with them in the breach to insist that the Episcopal Church do as it had promised to do, to trust in the Holy Spirit to guide it into all truths, just as Jesus said it would. If we are humble enough and willing to listen and follow. Not everyone is meant to be a prophet. We get that from our reading from the letter to the Ephesians. But all of us have gifts. All of us have abilities. And we are all called to bring what we have into practice for the purpose of spreading more love into the world. A love that sustains people and grows community, not chaos. The Spirit of the Lord is upon each of us now to do the work we have been given to do, to love God and love our neighbors as ourselves. In the name of our one holy and undivided Trinity. <clears throat> Stand now as we are able. I'm turning to page 358 in the Book of Common Prayer. Let's proclaim the faith of the Church of the Words in the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father of the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God eternally begotten of the Father, God for God, light for light, true God for true God, begotten not made, of one being in the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under the Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The prayers of the people can be found in your bulletin insert. O oh God, we ask for your guidance for all those who minister in your universal church, both lay and ordained. Equip the saints for their work of ministry and reveal the unity of the faith, so that we may build up the whole body of Christ. 
Let us speak in faith and courage God's love to the world. We give thanks for the election of our next providing bishop. Preserve his preserve our presiding bishop Michael as he finishes his term and grant grace and courage to Bishop Sean, his successor, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. We pray for those who lead our community and the nations of the world. Lead them to listen and discern wisdom, speak with care and truth, and follow a path that benefits all. Let us speak in faith and courage God's love to the world. We give thanks for the many gifts we receive from creation. The air we breathe, the water we drink, and the land that produces our food. But we know that we have also abused what we have been given. Help us to focus on sustainable resources and make the change necessary to be stewards of creation. Let us speak in faith and courage, God's love to the Lord. We are aware of the diversity in our communities. We come from different experiences, and yet in Christ we are one. Help us to continually see the light of God that is in each other, and lead us to heal the wounds and meet the needs all our neighbors. Let us speak in faith and courage. God's love to the world. We pray for our ecumenical partners in Jekyll Island, especially Jekyll Island Methodist Church and St. Francis of Xavier Catholic Church. In our companion diocese of the Dominican Republic, we call, pray for the congregations of Porto Plata, especially Christ the King. St. Francis of Sisi, and St. Simon the Apostle. Help them to shine the light of Christ and be a beacon for those who seek a deeper relation with, relationship with God. Let us speak in faith and courage, God's love to the world. We pray for those who are suffering in any kind of trouble, especially Linda, James, Nick, George, Zachary, Renee, Hope, Tom, Trinity, Pat, Jean, Rebecca, Avery, Courtney, Susan, Danny, Gilbert, Sheila, Glenn, Robert, Nate, Paul, Beth, Alexis, Mike, Harry, Richard, Mitch, Loverette, the Lejunius family, Bobby Michelle, Al, Cindy, Alex, Haley, Tara, Florence, Dana, Leonard, Mike, Lamar, Leslie, Julie, Jules, Alice, Sharon, Tanya, Paige, Sarah, Margie, Jessica, Lenora, Carl, Melinda, and Tim. Becky, David, James, Prue, Niles, and the Brown family, when they walk in the storm, they may have faith in Christ's strength. Let us speak in faith and courage. God's love to the world. We know our time in this realm is not endless. We pray for all who died, especially Richard Morgan, Timothy Brown, Lynn Crawford, Sharon Sharp Shanks, and the Reverend Ken Bob Carter. Welcome them into your eternal kingdom and give peace. Find hope for those who mourn, knowing that you are with us.
to the end of the age. Let us speak the faith and courage of God's love to the world. You may add your own prayers and thanksgiving at this time, either aloud or silent. Tim and Lulu. Tim and Lulu. For prayers for all those who are risen now for the arrival of Dr. Sarah Debbie. For all those parts of the world where there is violence and civil unrest. fervent prayers of your people. In the multitude of your mercies, look with compassion upon us and all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious, a lover of souls, and to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Turning now to page 360, let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. Glory Amen. Amen. Oh God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Siblings in Christ, the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let's greet each other in peace. Thank you. 
want to stand up for this, you can turn around with this. You can even dab around here if you want to. Good. Thanksgiving for the Lord. The Lord be with you.
Anything, any words you wanted to offer? You miss her. Yeah. 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 She was really a force. I have a lot to say about her, but I'm going to keep her brief. She was really a force at St. Barnabas when she first was here. 25 years ago was probably when she started here, and um, she was still mobile upright then, and a lot of these are at her. She was using the walker and the wheelchair and everything, but she she was really a strong woman, opinionated, a strong in spirit, strong in um, mentally, and um, just strong emotionally, strong in her faith, really. So um, I have a lot more to say about her. I'll probably say that for another day, but um, I was definitely miss her. I went to see her every Sunday for two years. I hope she got as much out of me coming to see her as I got out of me from her to when I visited her. So it was definitely a two-way street. Um, so that's, that's, I'm going to miss her a lot. Thank you. Our friendship was definitely a two-way mm -hmm. street. We had a good connection. Right? Only one thing we didn't mention. If we had a yard sale, we'd say, oh, we had yeah. a yard sale. Whoa! <laughs>
So you might want to stick inside tomorrow. And then Tuesday, it might be warm. So you just don't know. Pay attention to the weather. Pay attention to your local emergency management folks. And follow the instructions that you get. All right. Walking love as Christ loved us and gave himself an offering and sacrifice to God.
and gracious Father, and your infinite love, you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ is God. Christ is risen. Christ will come We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit, to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask for your Son, Jesus Christ. By him, with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil.
55 and the Book of Common Prayer. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and sinless of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. Send forth K. Riggle to take the Eucharist to Crew Mornfroft. May the prayers of this community go forth with those who await the gospel. Life is short. We don't have much time to gladden the hearts of those who walk this way with us. So be swift to love and make haste to be kind. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you this day and always. Amen. Let us stand and pray. Let us sing hymn number 690. 